insurance companies that don't know how to classify this. You know, well, what type of building is this? We don't have a category for you. Uh, does it burn? And say, well, get a blowtorch and try to burn that down. You know, and you'll get a nice patina. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, another abundant material that we have here that ranchers of the area get rid of is what we call in Spanish nopal, which has millions of uses, including mixing it with eggs. It's really good. <laughs> uh, or tunas. See, this is the actual pear, the prickly pear cactus, which when you're in the desert and the sun is hitting, it tastes really good. Uh, but I'm using it for construction. And this is an ancient method that has been revived, rediscovered, to make one of the most beautiful stuccos you can imagine. That you'll see in, in the most sacred Maya temples or uh, our early Spanish friars in the 16th century would reserve this technique for, for the altars and their murals. It's really pretty amazing technique. And ranchers will pay it again cactus off the ranch. So you're using the sap of the cactus. Okay, this gives you an idea. You see that little sheen to it? It gives you this burnishing effect. The, the cactus juice. Here we have a window. That window, uh, we, help, we call them oxides in Spanish, off of the way. It's one stone, and then the same stone repeated on the other side and a sheet of glass in between, in a thick wall. And they love it. Very simple to make. You make your own windows. Here we have some more of this. Uh, this was a remodel on uh, Lake Travis, where they wanted a whole new look. Uh, we built these walls with compressor block, by the way, and then came and made this uh, stucco finish. Uh, the stucco is made with uh, clay, lime cement, and, and prickly pear cactus juice. That's the mix. And the color is given by the color of the clay. In this case, it's a uh, sort of a beige looking clay that was used. And uh, the finish makes it look like the walls are made out of ivory. It's really high-end type of stuff. Tiles. We've been making tiles for thousands of years. Uh, these are antique tiles. People are paying $500, $600 per tile. Why can't we do this anymore? If it's that profitable. They've just forgotten how to do things. Uh, this is a, a, a kitchen using old tile, and we made the whole kitchen out of cement. The counters, this is a bathroom. This whole counter, we made it. Uh, of course, high-end fixtures. Is that cement as well? Yes, cement, and this is cement. This is a compresso block wall with a cactus stucco. Uh, this client was a chef, so his kitchen had to have the latest of the latest. So he has one of these high-tech stoves and ovens of all sorts. Uh, but we built it out of, the, made it out of cement. Uh, we put some antique tile, we put an old door, and it gave it its character. We made new ceilings, uh, used uh, old wood. Okay, this is a house where, this is a ranch house in West Texas where the, uh, we're using a product from the bathroom area, cedar, to make our, our heavy timber trusses.
If you go to northern New Mexico, Santa Fe, Taos, you're going to see this technique a lot for, for ceilings. It's uh, vigas and latillas, that's what they call them. And here we're using cedar branches, peel cedar branches. But otherwise you're just going to burn or get rid of. And this is a high-end project. Just using the natural materials. And you can do it yourself. <clears throat> mesquite doors. The government pays you to get rid of the mesquite. A&M uh, has scientists working on the mesquite to see if we can, uh, if they can come up with a straighter mesquite so we can use it more in construction. It's an excellent wood material and it's beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. And, and if you go to old villages in Mexico, you'll see a lot of mesquite doors. I've been there for 300 years. Dr. Yes. Are we about to finish? The next door. If, if you wouldn't mind, in just a couple minutes, maybe. Okay. I'll take you quickly through this. Uh, cast iron. This is, by the way, the uh, A&M house in, uh, in Austin. We, we made this uh, ornamental fence out of cast iron. Radiant slab heating. If your feet are warm, you're warm. You don't have to heat the whole volume. If, you have, if your feet are warm, you are warm. And you can use it as cooling. And you can tie it into your air conditioner. It doesn't need to be with water. Domes. These are domes. This is a technique from ancient Egypt that the Moors brought to Spain and then the Spanish brought to the New World. Now there's only one little village where the, there's craftsmen that know how to make this. This is in West Texas, in Alpine. <clears throat> Look at that. It, it's like magic to see these domes go up. No formwork. Is that, is that compressed soil block? Or? No, this is low-fired brick. Low-fired brick. It's really pretty amazing. This is a, a project also in Austin with, with uh, these bovedas. It's really a very simple technique. It's incredible how human ingenuity came up with a system of vaulting like that 3,000 years ago. See this window here? That's one stone. One little stone. Okay, this is a restoration project on the island of Guam where we restored it in, it was at the end of the 20th century before, but uh, if you didn't know what century you were, you'd think it was the 17th century, just because of how we built it. We built it with the materials on the island. This is a lime kiln. We're burning the limestone to make our own cement. We slake the, the, the uh, the lime, the pure lime, was burned, and that's how cement was made. And it wasn't only the Romans that invented cement, by the way. The Maya had cement. So it's independent invention. Here, of course, you can't do this today, but uh, we're, this is a big historical project, and here the flooring is uh, coral, which is an excellent material. And this is uh, work that I have my students do out at the Riverside campus, just making little structures because I only have a semester. Grand earth columns. One is uh, decomposed granite, the other is caliche. Grand earth wall, you can get very creative. A wall becomes a work of art. You don't need to hide it with vinyl siding. <laughs> See, and that's the thing, bamboo. There's lots of bamboo here. Just, and, and all we have to do is look at Asia, how they've taken bamboo to an art form. And here we're trying to get rid of it. Okay, well, let's use it somehow. And these are students working on a Cabreso block house at the Riverside campus using, uh, right now they're putting an earth stucco on it. They'll be finishing it with uh, uh, burnished cactus stucco. There it goes, all with natural materials. Okay, thank you very much.